Ready, madam. Thank you. I have definite information that he is here. Surely you must be mistaken. I'm sorry, miss. I can't be of help to you. There is no Dr. Randolph in town. Are you quite sure? Well, I've been commissioner of trade here for the past 10 years. Why, we've never had more than eight white men in this town at one time. I'd have known him. Then I failed again. I'm sorry. I'd like to help you. Thank you. The boat sails in an hour? Yes. Thank you again. Well, forgive me for being so insistent, but I've traveled 6,000 miles to find him. You're absolutely sure he isn't here. Well, Miss, we... He's a man about oh, six feet with the rather... Wait a minute. <laughs> Randolph, why, that's Dr. Clark. Then he is here. Where can I find him? He was here. He went to Maradou as court physician to Prince Sasha. Well, how can I get there? I fear that is impossible. Maradou is 300 miles inland and through the jungle. An entirely too dangerous a journey for a white woman to attempt. But I must find him. I'm his wife. His wife? Then let me send word to him that you are here. I'm afraid that's impossible. I must go to him myself. But you don't realize the risk. It's extremely dangerous. Matter, you said? Yes. Thank you. Uh, just a moment. If you insist upon going, let me make the arrangements for you. Very well. Michael.
reach Maradou? Tomorrow. Maybe. But you said that yesterday. Well, maybe. This countrywoman of yours still persists in visiting us. You're turning her back, aren't you? Mariti Marie Impi. What'd you tell him? Who let her come? You're making a mistake, Your Highness. She's Harry Buton. How do you know? The drums. They speak a language as clear as your telegraphy. Listen. Unquestionably, she is beautiful. Yes, I can imagine it. One of these typical he-women adventurers, gathering data for a book of life among the natives at Maradu. You're making a mistake, Your Highness. White women are bad enough in their own environment when you get them into the jungle. You know my reputation for hospitality. Surely I cannot turn her back without as much as a, a cup of tea. You can if you want to. Fortunately for you, it isn't in my nature to want to. Suppose I had wanted to, when the drums told me that you were in the jungle. Do you realize what would have happened? I probably would have lost my life. Undoubtedly. And I would never have found a court physician. A court physician? The one thing you don't need. You're never ill for a moment. And I'm never sober enough to do you any good if you should be. Oh, I owe you my life, all right. Sometimes I wonder whether it was worth saving after all. You're not happy here? Oh, I'm happy enough. As happy as I'd be any place. What do you get out of it? You play a very good game of chess. You're moderately civilized. <laughs> Flatterer. I know. You like to think of yourself as the civilized one. Of me as the barbarian. 
Aren't you? My ancestors were kings when yours were still hanging from the trees by their tail. I am descended from the Aryan race, the oldest white race known to man. All right. I'm a good chess player and I'm moderately civilized. Oh, uh, and uh, I like you. Well, you're not so bad yourself. A flatterer. Yippee for Andy, Larry Empey. Madame, I'm honored. Welcome to Marabou. I'm Linda Randolph. I hope you'll forgive my breaking in on you like this, but... It is I who must apologize for the humbleness of my heart. But all that it offers is yours. You're very kind. I don't wish to seem abrupt, but I came here to find Alan Clark. Is he here? I shall have him here within the hour. In the meantime, if you will permit me to escort you to your room, you will have an opportunity to refresh yourself after what must have been a very wearisome journey. Oh, but this is charming. I shall be happy if you find it comfortable. the honor to dine in an hour. Thank you, with pleasure. And Dr. Clark? And Dr. Clark. Au revoir. Tuan Dr. T. Malagama Gagwan. Indeed.
star. I but known of your arrival a little sooner. Better preparations for your entertainment would have been made. We are just two bachelors roughing it, as it were. But everything is more than charming, luxurious. It only seems so, in contrast to your days on the river. Do you think Dr. Clark will be here soon? The good doctor is not what one might call Punctilious. <laughs> the lack of social necessities, you see. Yes, of course. There. How's that, Leland? Pretty, huh? Like a crocodile. I'm all ready for his nibs to show me off to the white woman. Hey, Miller. Yes, sir. Well, that's just what he's planning to do. You know what I'm going to do, Neela? I'm going to make the most beautiful entrance. Merely my noble ancestor, bidding me good evening. Your ancestor? My line sprang full grown from the crater of that volcano. You look incredible. But then, of course, you would. I once had the bad taste to mention the fact when I was a student at the Sorbonne. And they believed it no more than you. But isn't it dangerous living here at the foot of a volcano? Not for me. But suppose it should erupt. It won't. That is. Not so long as I live. But when the end comes for me, then the end must come for Maradou. I have no sons. I'm the last of my line. It will be the end, Maradou. Mrs. Randolph must be famished.
your journey up the river. You found it very interesting, Mrs. Rondo? And it was beautiful. Beautiful. Only a very brave woman would hazard such a trip. Don't you agree, Doctor? Beg to be excused, Your Highness. For the very excellent reason that I'm completely and beautifully drunk. You have a headache. Yes, I have. As a matter of and fact, And you I... wish to be excused. Would you forgive me? But of course, Mrs. Randall. Thank you. Oh, Maranoop, go on PNT. you expected, eh? Well, that's too bad. That's certainly too bad. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. What'd you come here for, anyhow? What do you want? I came because I love you. Because I've always loved you. Because you... That's a good one. That's the best joke I've heard since I've been in the jungle. That's what he did. Smart fella, Harry. That's what I should have done. Kicked you That's right out on you. That's true, Alan. I know what's true and what isn't true. You were my wife, Linda. My wife. Then you met Harry. Well, I didn't stand in your way, did I? I gave you grounds for divorce, didn't I? Told you to go right out and marry him, didn't I? Told you you could have him, didn't I? Well, isn't that enough? What more do you want? I gave you your freedom. Alan, I... Well, I've come 9,000 miles to tell you there wasn't any divorce. To tell you I was never in love with Harry. To tell you it was all in your imagination. You were working hard, always experimenting. You left me alone, always alone. I hardly ever saw you. We hadn't been married a year. Oh, of course Harry took me places. You didn't expect me to sit in a chair in front of a fire day after day, night after night. Did you? I 
I was never unfaithful to you, Alan. I swear it. I believe you. I believe every word you say, but it doesn't matter. Three years ago, you didn't want me. Now I don't want you. Get out. Get out. Just a little too late. I came for our game of chess. If you'll excuse me, I'm not on the mood tonight. Well, uh, I can well understand that. Still, I wonder if you're not making a mistake. After all, she is very beautiful. And brave and desirable. Not to me. I wasn't thinking of you. swim the crocodile, and he is a free man.
Your Highness. My bargeman. Would you send for him and tell him we're returning this afternoon? Returning this afternoon? Oh, surely you're joking. No, I really must. But, my dear, I made such elaborate plans for your entertainment tonight. I couldn't possibly let you go until tomorrow. In the morning, if you still wish to go. Ah, oh, good morning, Doctor. Why, well, you're up early. Good morning. I'm afraid the excitement has been a little bit too much for our guest, Doctor. Get out! Get out! Funny thing. You outdo yourself to amuse a woman, she repays you with hysterics. Mrs. Randolph's always been a bit peculiar. Now, most women, I'm sure, would take great pleasure in seeing a man devoured by a crocodile. Sarcasm, my dear doctor, is a little out of place in the jungle. Yes, there's so many things that used to seem all right that are out of place in the jungle. Mrs. Randolph, for instance. Then why don't you rescue her? Rescue her? You mean she's in danger? Don't you think so? Yes, I do. Well, you think I'm fool enough to cut my own throat? You might. You save hers. It's a rotten shame, that's what it is. Taking a nice little fellow like you away from your mother. Hmm. I like making things captive in this place. When we're full, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. Tell you what I'll do, I'm gonna let you go. And then thank me. Now, I can't go with you. I wish I could. There you are. Goodbye.
Alan. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. That's going to help a lot. Was it important? I don't know. I would have in a few minutes. That might have been an antitoxin for yellow fever. yourself into a mess and you come to me to get you out. Why should I? There's so many reasons, Alan. There's so many. You've probably forgotten it all seems so long ago. But we did make certain promises. Until death do us part. Well, that's what we promised, Alan. To love. To honor. One chance in a thousand. Perhaps it might be arranged. I tell you what we'll do. Tonight. Tonight? Tonight you're dining with the prince. I'm sure that in return for your favors, he'll grant you anything you may ask. I never mix my loyalties, Linda. You ought to know that by now. Nerve have you got? Lots if I'm with you.
safe now. The raft is just around that bend. waiting quite a while, Dr. Clark. Tell him him ballet. Allow me to escort you back to the palace, Mrs. Randall. I'm not intruding. I just come to tell you that dinner will take place as arranged. You can be ready in half an hour. I don't think I'm very hungry. Besides... I couldn't possibly give up the pleasure of your company. I've made such elaborate preparations. Music, dancing. I'm sure you'll feel much better after you've changed your clothes. 
One always does, don't you think? Well, yes. I suppose you're right. In half an hour? In half an hour. I came to personally apologize for the fact that your dinner is late. The palace has been a bit upset this evening by a series of uh, unusual events. I'm letting you go in the morning. Corsa, I would let you go tonight, but the visibility is so bad that I'm afraid from my seat on the terrace. I wouldn't be able to see a thing. By the way, I suggest you eat a hearty meal tonight. You'll need all your strength for your little swim in the morning. My favorite frock. Everyone laughed at me for bringing evening clothes to Maradou. But I said, you never can tell. And you never can, can you? Hardly ever.
some of those steps. What a sensation I'd be. You have very beautiful hands. What's the matter? Are you afraid? A little afraid. Of uh, me? Good heavens, no. Of myself. I'm not sure I understand. You see, it's all very simple. I've gotten Alan into a mess. It's very foolish of us to try and escape. And reckless, too. Yes, very reckless. Is he still under God? Yes. Why don't you let him go? Would it make you happy if I did? I told you I am happy. But I hate to think of anyone being unhappy on a night like this. I'm letting him go in the morning. And I wouldn't be surprised if he made it. He's an excellent swimmer. Oh, you wouldn't do that. You'd let him go if I asked you. Please. You're very beautiful. I'm also very clever, but not quite clever enough. Osman. It is not exactly a compliment to me, Mrs. Randolph, that you should believe the oldest game in the world could fool a member of the oldest race. Not only will Clark swim the lake tomorrow, but you will be there to see him. And you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that had you behaved with a little more finesse, you might have saved his life. You'd better dry your eyes, my dear. Tears won't help a bit. Move the 
bullet, but it may bring on a hemorrhage. There's about one chance in ten. Shall I try it? By all means. You know my price. I can guess. It'll be paid in advance. Is that fair? Probably not, but those are my terms. Tell Osmond to put Mrs. Randolph safely aboard her raft and start her downstream. Indy, is here, Osman. I won't go without you. You've raised enough hell around here, Linda. Now, for the first time in your life, you're going to do as you're told. Come on now, get out. This is the end of Maradu. Go. Oh. 